1973. Just a little bit more drunk than he was in 1972. <laughs> the extraordinary thing about Keith was that whatever you felt about him as a drummer, and, and I didn't think very much of him as a drummer. <laughs> um, it's kind of sacrilege, isn't it? But I didn't. Um, uh, he listened. People would call him sloppy drummer, and he never was a sloppy drummer. He had an extraordinary metronome. He made the music dramatic. What he wouldn't do is play boom boom ba ba boom ba boom boom you know he'd be bing 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 you know. And I'd be going boom boom bang bang boom but because somebody had to Top of his game in 73, 73, 74. Absolute top of his game. He was magnificent and funny as hell. You know, I tell the funny stories about him showing up and saying, Come outside and look at my new car. And we go out and there'd be a Rolls Royce and you say, um, Oh, it's fabulous, Keith, great. And then, you know, two hours later, we'd have from somebody from Jack Barber's, Where well, I send the invoice for our Keith Mills' new car? He said, uh, We'll to send it to the Who Group. Is it the Who Group? I said, no, you send it to Keith Moon. No, 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 no. We have to send it to the Who Group. I said, no, we're not fucking paying for it, OK? You know, this is his car. Let him pay for it. No, 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 you don't understand. No, you don't fucking understand. We're not paying for his car. Ah, ah that's better. I think today you'd say he had ADHD and he needed some Ritalin or something. Hello, Keith. <laughs> but taking cocaine and mandrax and brandy was exacerbating it. It was always a mixture with Keith, you know, fun one minute and a bit frightening the next, and I never felt afraid of him, but frightened for him and people around him. And he wasn't at his best as a human being at that time. I don't know that any of us were, really. I shouldn't really single him out. 